Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to my studio. Now today we've got something slightly different and we're going to have a go at this little still life of a Cornish cream tea. And the reason for this is last week Margot had a little break down in Cornwall while some of us were at home doing this and this, feeding them and walking them. And then I'd get photos text to me with things like having a lovely time and look at this lovely cream tea we're having. So I thought, well, at least we can paint it. So come and join me and we'll do this step by step together. Just before we start, I do want to talk about something which is relevant to this week's painting. And that's the controversy we had on the Facebook group regarding last week's tutorial. All very friendly, of course. Now, some had asked why I had forgotten to paint this little section of the roof. Now, I actually did it on purpose. Not only here, but in the bottom right hand corner. And it's not just a space left for my signature. Now, let me explain my reason for this. Now, a few years back, I posted this painting of mine on a Facebook group and it was well received with lots of comments like, wow, it almost looks like a photo. Now, they were intended as compliments and I took them as such. But part of me was also thinking that's not really the direction I want to go because for me, Painting should be something the camera can't do. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm very proud of the painting. And you may have noticed it hangs directly behind me on the wall. But on some of my looser work, I like to leave a few unpainted areas. It can add just that little bit of artistic nuance or statement, which clearly takes it away even further from looking photographic. And here are a few further examples of where I've used this technique. I think what I have learned from this is that it can be a very fine line between an artistic statement and, oh, Paul's forgotten to finish his painting. Anyway, shall we start? Okay, so for today's materials, my paper is some Windsor & Newton Professional 300 pound rough, but any decent watercolor paper will do. My paints, normal three primaries, cobalt blue, alizarin crimson, cadmium yellow, some cadmium orange, yellow ochre, Payne's grey, cerulean blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and some quadacridone rose. Just three brushes today, a three quarter inch flat, and a number six and number 12 round. To start with, I'm using my flat brush and just wetting this top left hand area for a lovely out of focus soft background. And you can use any colors you like here, but I'm just throwing in some blues and greens. And this here is just a touch of cerulean blue. Now doing the same here with the bottom right and here I'm using some Daniel Smith's Quinacridone Rose for the tablecloth. Okay, so drying off with some tissue and then just lifting out a few suggestions of some folds. And because it's still wet, you may have to do this several times. Now, I'm adding in a tiny amount of cobalt blue into the mix, dropping this in wet and wet to help with the effect. Okay, so now for the scones or scones, I never know which, you say potato and I say potato and all that. So I want to get that suggestion of the caster sugar on the top. So I'm taking a little piece of candle wax and lightly dragging it over the top edge. Next is just a watery mix of yellow ochre. And you can see the wax resist at work here. Now 
Here I'm dropping in wet in wet some burnt sienna. And here just a little touch of burnt amber. Now for the cream, a very watery mix of yellow ochre with just a touch of cadmium yellow and then just dabbing out with some tissue a few highlights. And all I've done here is adding a tiny amount of burnt sienna. Now for the base wash of the jam or jelly if you're from North America and this is some alizarin crimson. So now we need to let this totally dry. So it's a perfect time for a short break. And if you can't beat them, enjoy them. A lovely cuppa. You haven't got any scones or cream, have you? And now I'm doing the same here with the wax, but this time I'm applying it on top of the dry wash. And then on with a little darker alizarin crimson. Now for a few subtle shadows. So I did mix this from my three primaries, but you can use some Payne's Grey or a neutral tint if you have it. And then when it's dry, I'm simply going over with a second glaze or wash. Now here, just to give the shadows a touch of local colour, I'm adding in some quidacridone rose into the grey mix and then using some clean water just to soften the edges. then a watery mix for a few more creases. Next I'm using a really old grotty brush to mask out a few highlights in the teapot with some masking fluid. Just make sure you clean your brush straight away. I've ruined many in my time. Now you can use a ruling pen for this or another tip is to just dip your brush in soap before using. Next, I'm re-wetting the teapot to make sure I get plenty of movement in the paint. Now with a lovely strong mix of cerulean blue. Now you could use some phalo blue. And this is the Schmincke paint and I love it as it's very strong and pigmented. 
and it's all done with my number 12. Now dry off and lift out these subtle highlights. Even a little dab with the tissue. Okay, so now for these darker shadows and I've mixed in some Cobalt Blue and Payne's Grey and dropping it into the wet wash. And that's really the reason for putting in that clean water first to guarantee these lovely wet in wet blends. As it's beginning to dry, you can still lift out a few highlights. Okay, so now for the pattern on the plate, and you can see it's a pretty little floral design, but I'm not even going to try to replicate it. Just a very loose suggestion. Make up lots of dashes and dots and squiggles. If you try to paint it too exact with detailed little flowers, your eye will be drawn too much to it, so keep it very loose and impressionistic. And of course, any colour you like. Watery burnt sienna here for a few further details. And now with my number 12 brush, a few dry brush textures on these scones, scones, whatever. Okay, so now for a little story. Some of you may be aware of the bitter and bloody rivalry between Yorkshire and Lancashire going back to the Wars of the Roses in 1455. But that pales into insignificance when it comes to the rivalry between Devon and Cornwall and who created the cream tea. They even have different ways of serving it, with the Cornish insisting the jam should go on the scone first with the cream to follow, and the Devonians saying the cream should always be first. I tell ya. Now it's even been suggested that one of the reasons why this is one of the few areas of Britain that wasn't invaded by the Romans is that they managed to kill them all off by cholesterol, by throwing pasties and cream teas at them. Anyway, shall we move on? Here is just a darker alizarin crimson shadow. Now for these spoons, I'm just using some Payne's Grey and then moving on for a few more little shadow details.
Okay, so now let's remove the masking fluid and be very careful because I know some papers can rip. And then with my number six brush and a very light wash of cerulean blue and just knocking back the white a little. And here adding in some shadows with a watery cobalt blue to get that touch of contrast. And here just a slightly darker value by adding in a little Payne's grey. Okay, so do I ever make mistakes? Yes, often. And you can see here, the background should have stopped to suggest the edge of the table. So just with some clean water, I'm scrubbing with my brush and then lifting out with a tissue. So you won't get back to pure white, but you can remove enough to overlay the pink without too much stress. Nearly there, and just a few highlights with my white pastel pencil. Okay, and now finally with some soft pastels. And you can see the effect I've got from the wax I've applied, but I just think it could do with a little more sugar on the top. And perhaps a little sparkle in the jam. There we go, done. And I'm quite liking the two unpainted corners. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. Now here in the UK, pubs, restaurants and cafes are now being allowed to open for the first time. And I really hope it's the same for you wherever you are in the world. So let's get out there and support the service industry who've had a particularly bad time over the last year and a bit. So. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment, put the thumbs up, and I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Take care, everyone.